Tonight, I'm proud to introduce our special guest, Grammy-nominated artist, Carolyn Malachi. Carolyn is a professor at Howard University's Kathy Hughes School of Communications in Washington, D.C. In her presentation, she'll share the immersive mixing techniques used in the reimagining of Dr. Myangelo's 1956 album, Miss Calypso. Hello, Carolyn. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm doing well. Hello, everybody. So you're ready to roll? Ready to roll. Let's see. Let me share some background info here. All right. So just for context, um, my and thank you everybody for being here. I'm Carolyn Malachi. So my sound design work focuses on headphone supported spatial podcast music and film. And since most podcasters, independent artists, independent filmmakers, uh, folks who produce public art experiences and students don't have access to uh, fully tuned spatial mix rooms. And since the majority of listeners will uh, take in this work on headphones anyway, I've chosen to focus my work and my instruction on spatial audio um, that uses headphone monitoring. So I'm always asking this question, like what is the truth in this sound design uh, in Adobe Atmos environment? And what I'm finding uh, as I work with students and especially as we worked on this reimagining of the Miss Calypso project is that uh, listeners who, people who wear headphones all the time, their personal experience of the natural world has been sort of co-opted and hacked by the devices that they're using to recreate the world. So it's a very interesting uh, toss up here. And as you all know, overuse of headphones is prevalent among all ages, but um, there are two things that cause, I think, complications when we're working in Atmos. Um, our, it's, we're in, our awareness of discrete sound sources is interrupted. And of course, there's the hearing loss issue. All in all, our, impaired exp our experience of the natural world is impaired and dramatically reduced. So uh, the truth about interrupted awareness of discrete sound sources, um, what I'm observing as I work with students and as I do my own work in Atmos is that, you know, the wearing of headphones through studying, walking around campus, commuting, working out, cooking, et cetera, not only isolating ourselves from each other, but uh, we have a severed relationship between us and the real world. So when we're working at Atmos, that means for a lot of folks, our perception of uh, 3D parameters is skewed and it becomes apparent. And what I'm seeing is um, objects being placed quite broadly and um, just because it looks right and maybe feels right, but not because there's any truth in their sense of, in the sense of how they're supposed to sound. So from the perspective of a novice sound designer whose sonic view of the world has always been earbuds, a bird flying overhead should be at the top of my heights. And because there's no listening or because our listening of the world is filtered, um, the bird kind of sounds like it should be there too, but they really don't know if the bird <laughs> should be there. Oh, and all in all, the result is a less localized, more diffuse feeling in the mix. And a lot of times overuse just results in a, a, a mono feeling overall. Also, uh, because there is this lack of real world experience, I'm noticing there's just ample object movement and that movement is erratic and it seems to mimic more so the sound designer's internal feelings rather than the authentic pace of their natural environment. It's also the hearing loss issue, and it's not a, a grown adult thing. It's actually happening way before college. Uh, approximately one out of six teenagers has uh, experienced measurable hearing loss, likely resulting from the excessive, uh, excessive noise and excessive use of headphones. So specifically in my students, what I'm seeing is an inability to recognize tonal changes. So we use... Uh, we do a lot of ear training, technical listening in my classes. 
And for example, I have students who have difficulty recognizing a tonal shift between 120 hertz and 500 hertz. Wow. So coming to the truth in sound design via head supported uh, spatial audio, um, I'm, I focus them on two goals or just two topics of focus. Uh, one is their personal immersion in the story and the environment. And then also an understanding of our client and our end users listening habits, which are much like their own. So when we're working on film, um, I adopt in my classes and for myself a capture first philosophy. So that means no samples. That's the ground rule, no samples. We do avid location scouting. Um, we do our own ambi recording, our own Foley production. And we're out in the field with humble tools. So just H4N field recorders, 360 field recorders, and with um, AT897s. And this is forcing an interaction with the real world that they normally don't have. And you'd be surprised how much this makes their mixes sound uh, more cohesive, but also more realistic. With music, um, the rule is you got to lean into the story that's being told. And as far as object placement and movement, I limit them to three that can move. And those movements have to be meaningful. They have to contribute to the narrative of the story. So for example, um, in this, this project is unreleased and the, I will say it this way. There's a project that remixes of songs from an album from 1956. It's called Miss Calypso. And it was uh, done by Dr. Maya Angelou. This album is being reimagined for a museum experience that goes live right around Juneteenth at the Birmingham Civil Rights Museum. So people who visit the museum will be able to see Dr. Angelou's artwork from her personal collection. But then as they travel around the exhibit, they will be able to hear these remixes. And one of the songs, and all, and all of the listing will be done um, in headphones. And one of the songs uh, is called Stone Cold Dead. The narrative is kind of like, I don't know if you all have seen a very old movie, Nuff, I believe, J-Lo, it was like J-Lo starred in it. Um, by the end of the song, Maya Angelou has, she's the conqueror, she's the victor. And the her assailant is lying stone cold dead in the market. And so the idea was we have her prancing around, <laughs> prancing around the market, like celebrating her, her liberty from, um, from a long time abuser. But in order to do that in a way that makes sense, that actually replicates the market, we go to the market, we identify the parameters of an aisle and we work within that rather than just, you know, having this object run around in a circle. That's not realistic. So as a result of focusing on these things, we're able to leverage Atmos and the personal devices that have historically hacked our awareness to develop compelling productions and sound design. So thank you.